I tell you this, heal the rift between you and the illusion of separation and you shall be delivered back to the source of your inner strength. That is where you will find true power, the power to do anything, the power to be anything, the power to have anything. For the power to create is derived from the inner strength. That is produced through unity. Stop thinking of yourself as separate and all the true power that comes from the inner strength of unity is yours. As a worldwide society and as an individual part of the whole. Yet remember this, power comes from inner strength. Inner strength does not come from power. Power without inner strength is an illusion. And inner strength without unity is a lie. For you think that inner strength comes from individuality and from separateness. And that is simply not so. Separation from God and from, from each other is the cause of all your dysfunction and suffering. Still, separation continues to masquerade as strength, and your politics, your economics, and even your religions have perpetuated the lie. Now I tell you this, know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. There is no separation, not from each other, and not from God, and not from anything that is Act as if you were separate from nothing and no one and you will heal your world tomorrow. This is the greatest secret of all time. It is the answer for which man has searched for millennia. It is the solution for which he has worked, the revelation for which he has prayed. Act as if you are separate from nothing and you heal the world. Understand that it is power with, not power over, the purpose of your soul, its reason for coming to the body is to be and express who you really are. The soul yearns to do this, yearns to know itself in its own experience. This yearning to know is life seeking to be. Your soul is the tool through which I express and experience myself. I tell you, I am in every flower, every rainbow, every star in the heavens, and everything in and on every planet rotating around every star. I am the whisper of the wind, the warmth of your sun, the incredible individuality and extraordinary perfection of every snowflake. I am the majesty and the soaring flight of eagles and the innocence of the doe in the field, the courage of the lions, the wisdom of the ancient ones. And I am not limited to the modes of expression seen on your planet alone. You do not know who I am, but only think you do. My beingness is in everything, everything. The allness is my expression. The wholeness is my nature. There is nothing that I am not and something I am not cannot be. My purpose in creating you, my blessed creatures, was so that I may have an experience of myself as the creator of my own experience. The one aspect of divinity that only a very special creature could create was the aspect of myself as the creator. I am not the god of your mythologies. I am the creator, that which creates. Yet I choose to know myself in my own experience. Just as I know my perfection of design through a snowflake, my awesome beauty through a rose, and so too do I know my creative power through you. To you, I have given the ability to consciously create your experience, which is the ability I have. Through you, I can know every aspect of me, the perfection of the snowflake, the awesome beauty of the rose, the courage of the lions, the majesty of the eagles, all resides in you. In you, I have placed all of these things and one more thing, than consciousness to be aware of it. Thus you have become self-conscious, and thus you have been given the greatest gift, for you have been aware of yourself, being yourself, which is exactly what I am. I am myself, aware of myself, being myself. You are that part of me which is awareness, experienced. And what you are experiencing is me, creating me. 
I am in the continual act of creating myself. And you are me choosing to be me. You are me choosing to be what I am and choosing what I am going to be. I know who I am. I know who I have always been and who I always will be. You see, you've already done the choosing. Everything you're going to be, do, or have, you've already been, done, or had. You're doing it right now. There is no such thing as time. Past, present, and future are concepts you have constructed, realities you have invented, in order to create a context within which to frame your present experience. Otherwise, all of your experiences would be overlapping, and they actually are. That is, happening at the same time. Time. You simply don't know this. You've placed yourself in a perception shell that blocks out total reality. Your story, your worldly drama, was created so that you could know who you are in your own experience. It's also been designed to help you forget who you are so that you might remember who you are once again and create it. And since it is the greatest desire of the soul to experience itself as the creator, and since everything has already been created, we had no choice other than to find a way to forget all about our creation. What we use to help us forget is that which some of you would call the pleasure principle. The highest nature of all pleasure is that aspect of pleasure which causes you to create who you really are in your experience right here, right now. And to recreate and recreate and recreate again and again who you are at the next highest level of magnificence. That is the highest pleasure of God. The lower nature of all pleasure is that part of pleasure which causes you to forget who you really are. Do not condemn the lower nature, for without it you could not experience the higher. The cosmic wheel, it is the cycle of life, or what I sometimes term the process. It is a picture phrase describing the no beginning, no end nature of things, the continually connected path to and from the all of everything, on which the soul joyfully journeys throughout eternity. It is the sacred rhythm of all life by which you move the energy of God. When you die, you do not stop creating. Now, the reason you do not stop creating when you die is that you don't ever die. You cannot. For you are life itself, and life cannot not be life. So at the moment of your death, what happens is, you go on living. In a very short time, the soul learns that it can be anywhere with the speed of thought. A feeling of incredible freedom and lightness overtakes the soul, and it usually takes a while for the entity to get used to all this bouncing around with every thought. If the person had children and should think of those children immediately, the soul is in the presence of those children, wherever they are. Thus the soul learns that not only can it be wherever it wants with the speed of its thought, it can be in two places at once, or three, or five. It can exist, observe, and conduct activities in these places simultaneously, without difficulty or confusion. Then it can rejoin itself, returning to one place again, simply by refocusing. The soul remembers in the next life what it would have been well to remember in this life. That all effect is created by thought. And that manifestation is a result of intention. What I focus on as my intention becomes my reality. The only difference is the speed with which you experience the result. In the physical life, there might be a lapse between the thought and the experience. Newly departed souls therefore learn to monitor their thoughts very carefully because whatever they think of, they experience. If physicalized souls learn to do this, to control their thoughts as quickly and as efficiently as spiritualized souls, their whole lives would change. In the creation of individual reality, thought control, or what some might call prayer, because thought control is the highest form of prayer. Therefore, think only on good thoughts and righteous things. Dwell not in negativity and darkness, and even in those moments when things look bleak, 
especially in those moments. See only perfection. Express only gratefulness. And then imagine what manifestation of perfection you choose next. In this formula is found tranquility. In this process is found peace. In this awareness is found joy. As you begin to remember that you are at cause in the creation of your experience, not at the effect of it, you remember that life is a single occurrence, an event in the cosmos that is happening right now. All of it is happening everywhere. There is no time but now. There is no place but here. Here and now is all there is. Yet you chose to experience the magnificent of here and now in its every detail. And to experience your divine self as the here and now creator of that reality, there are only two ways, two fields of experience in which you could do that, time and space. So magnificent was this thought that you literally exploded with the light. And that explosion of the light was created space between the parts of you and the time it took to move from one part of yourself to another. In this way, you literally tore yourself apart to look at the pieces of you. You might say that you were so happy you fell to pieces. I am giving you tools. With these tools, you can change your life. Everything that occurs, everything that has occurred, is occurring, and ever will occur is the outward manifestation of your innermost thoughts, choices, and ideas, and determinations regarding who you are and who you choose to be. Condemn not, therefore, those aspects of life with which you disagree. Seek instead to change them and the conditions that made them possible. Behold the darkness, yet curse it not. Rather be a light unto the darkness, and so transform it. Let your light so shine before other men that those who stand in the darkness will be illumined by the light of your being, and you will see at last who you really are. Be a bringer of the light, for the light can do more than illuminate your own path. Your light can truly be the light that lights the world. Shine on, then, O Illuminati, shine on that the moment of your greatest darkness may yet become your grandest gift. And even as you are gifted, so too will you gift others. Give to them the unspeakable treasure, themselves. Let this be your task. Let this be your greatest joy, to give people back to themselves, even in their darkest hour, especially in that hour. The world waits for you. Heal it now. In the place where you are, there is much you can do. For my sheep are lost and must now be found. Be you therefore as good shepherds and lead them back to me.